As we near the end of 2018, one of the biggest changes have been how the Indian farmer has made herself heard. From rallies to long marches and especially at the electoral hustings, the farmer can no longer be mollycoddled by political parties. For the BJP and Narendra Modi, addressing some of the needs of the agricultural economy has become top priority. Bloomberg has reported that the government is mulling several options. Um, among this is a monthly income support plan, paying farmers the gap between MSPs and the market price, as well as making changes to the crop insurance scheme easier. In fact, there are a number of options being reported, including a farm loan waiver option, a direct payout to farmland owners, and even waiving off interests completely for farmers that pay their loans on time. So what can the government really do in the time remaining, and how much of a difference will it make politically? To speak on this, I'm joined today by Suraj Hussain, former Agricultural Secretary, uh, Avik Saha, spokesperson of uh, Swaraj India, and uh, Shankar Rayar, political economy analyst joins us as well. Welcome to all of you and thank you for speaking with us today. Um, Mr. Uh, Siraj Hussain, let me start by asking you about some of the options that we've seen come to the fore. Um, it talks a lot about how the crop insurance scheme will be tweaked. Either premiums will be removed completely or lessened, uh, coverage uh, will be increased. That is one of the options that is being mulled as well. So let's start by talking about the crop insurance scheme and what do you think the Modi government can do in the time it has remaining? In the crop insurance scheme, uh, the basic challenge is to pay to the farmers hit by the calamities in time. Uh, now for that, we need a much higher input of uh, technology. Uh, so I, I, if I was to advise the government, I would not have advised uh, them to completely waive the premium because the premiums are already very low, actually, 1.5% and 2%. Uh, respectively for Rabi and Kharif. So they're already very low. And if the premiums are completely waived, there may be a number of problems relating to adverse selection, banks, uh, you know, insuring people, um, etc. Earlier we have seen some of these problems in some states. So I do not think that uh, government should be considering complete waiver of farmers' share of premium. However, um, what the uh, scheme needs is a much faster settlement of claims. Uh, and for that, we need uh, some technological innovation, which is not on the table yet. That is one. Secondly, another um, component of farm insurance, which has been totally missing so far, is the insurance for cattle. You know, there are some people who say that the crop insurance scheme is a failure and all that money is going to this company, that company. So let them suggest something to the government which will enable the government to ensure uh, that the farmers are insured against loss of cattle. Yeah. Because that is not yet solved. Yeah. How are we going to achieve that? No, just uh, an overall view from you, uh, Mr. Hussain, of all the options that we've been seeing are reported by, uh, you know, uh, various publications. Um, and all of these are, of course, source-based because no um, announcement has been made so far. What do you think that the Modi government can do? Clearly, it has to be something which is big on um, optics at the very least uh, because they are fighting um, a perception that this government has not done enough for farmers. They, s they have to show people that they are doing something. What are the options that you think are available? I think administratively, the easiest option is to completely waive the interest on crop loans. Right now, the interest on crop loans is about 4% for timely payment. And several states have already waived it because they pay the premium, the uh, interest which is paid by the farmer, that is 4%. So Madhya Pradesh is already doing that. Tamil Nadu is already doing that. So it is possible that the government will take, uh, will pay the farmer's share of interest also. That is administratively easier to do. Now, as far as the other options are concerned, price deficiency payment, in my view, is completely ruled out because our administrative mechanism does not support that kind of uh, intervention where every farmer's sale in the market is correctly recorded. 
and the market the difference between market price and that sale price is paid. We have seen it failing in Madhya Pradesh. So that option is ruled out. The third option is some kind of uh, income support on Telangana model. I wrote about it in the wire that despite uh, you know the Raitu Bandhu in Telangana and despite the waiver of uh, farm loans between 2014 and 2017, some 16,000 crores. Despite that, the TRS again promised waiver of farm loans, another 18,000 crores. So I would not have advised the Prime Minister to, to waive the farm loans, but maybe the other two schemes. Um, you know, Avik Saha, um, Swaraj India, of course, has been at the forefront of, um, you know, the agitation we've seen from farmers across the country. Uh, you speak to them, you hear from them, and you know all of the options that are being spoken about today. Uh, the monthly income support scheme, do you think that is something which will make a genuine difference uh, to Indian farmers? Swaraj India is in fact one of the organizations that forms the Grand Alliance called All India Kisan Sangharsh Coordination Committee. Now, uh, we've always advocated uh, a look, a hard, real look at guaranteeing incomes of farmers as a solution to the agrarian crisis. Uh, what is now being put forth are knee-jerk knee reactions. You see, for four years, this government was farewell to farmers. And in the last year, it's now welfare of farmers. This won't work. Uh, there are many things on the table. The government will try populist measures. Uh, loan waiver is uh, possibly one of them. But we've repeatedly said that loan waiver is not the solution. The solution is and will always be a remunerative price. And uh, as has been reported, uh, by Bloomberg. You see, uh, the understanding is that if production goes up, price must fall. That understanding is an incorrect understanding, and that's where the government needs to step in. I agree that there should be cheap food for the poor in this country, but then it shouldn't be the farmers who should be subsidizing the cheap food. So if you correct the price imbalance, if you make prices remunerative and you clean the slate once, because the loans that the farmers are currently mired into are because of the poor prices they've been receiving, then you have a somewhat composite solution. There are many aspects more. There needs to be a composite relook at the agricultural policy, and somebody like Mr. Hussein is competent to do that. Yeah. The problem is nobody in the yeah. government is interested in this exercise. No, but you know, you, you, you want to... I, I understand your political position as well, Mr. Saha, but if they really do announce something, remember, this is what is being demanded. Uh, and then would you give uh, this government a fair chance uh, to fulfill those promises uh, if they are going to be making any of these uh, announcements uh, that are being uh, reported on right now? You see, uh, payments based on land leave out more than 50% of the farmers who do contract farming, farming on leased lands, sharecroppers. So that's not a solution to, for half the people. Uh, so land-based payments are out. Uh, waiver of interest is a very small component of the problem. Waiver of loans coupled with price, as I just mentioned, is uh, a somewhat more composite solution. What else is on the table? Uh, insurance will work well, thank you. Uh, but please don't pray for calamity so that I need that insurance. So these are not composite. That's what I'm harping on. These are very, very short-term looks and populist looks at the problem. And this is not, they're dealing and they're treating the symptom. Okay. They're not treating the illness. Okay. We, we have to see what uh, the primary driver here is, and uh, this is where Shankar Ayer comes in. Uh, uh, Shankar, clearly uh, this government will have to act when it comes to farm distress. We've seen uh, what uh, you know this issue did for the BJP electorally in the five-state uh, elections that just concluded. Uh, what do you think they will do? I know you've uh, been running an online uh, Twitter poll today. Uh, what are people saying? What do you think this government will do? And is three months enough uh, to even give the impression that you really care for for any government? Well, the promise is the primary driver of electoral outcomes. So promise will be made, and in what form it happens, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, loan waivers actually 
discriminate against contract farmers, tenancy tenant farmers. Similarly, the Raitu uh, scheme of Telangana also discriminates against tenant farmers. There are ways to rectify that, which is to adopt the tenancy law, that uh, the model that has been pending for over two years now. The point that uh, one must recognize is that there is a cost of production and there is what is called viable viability for agriculture. Now, how this happens is that if the agriculture, the farmer gets remunerative prices through better connectivity with markets, with credit markets, with insurance, the fossil bima is actually uh, worse than paracetamol policy because I mean, the farmer doesn't uh, get the benefit unless the whole district goes down. So these are not the options. I think the income support is probably a one-time relief that could come through, and that might be one answer to uh, the electoral issue. Remember that it is now we are in the cusp of the announcement of the election, and denial of any swap or relief will result in denial of votes. And the government is very cognizant of that, and so something will be announced. So what form, what is the magnitude of this will be determined. The larger issue is that if you look at the inflation figures, it is the food prices which have collapsed or gone down the most. And so the question, genuine question of legitimacy in a political economy is that can one section of the people subsidize the rest of the economy? The question that one must ask is, can nearly 50% of the population survive on 14% of the national income? It is not sustainable, yeah. and it does, is definitely not a recipe for 9% growth that the country aspires for. So a relief is necessary, but a relief the relief must be followed by a complete redraft of the cropping pattern in India. And those are issues that have been neglected in the last four years. I think the problem is that this government has uh, tried to address headlines more than it has tried to address the news. Um, you know, uh, these are some long-term issues which we keep talking about when we speak about rural distress and the agricultural economy. Um, the fact is, uh, these issues will take uh, years, if not decades, to um, fix. Meanwhile, there's uh, about 100 days uh, to go till the next elections kick off. And uh, Siraj Hussain will have to really recognize that that is where uh, most of these decisions will stem from. Uh, for example, uh, Business Standard uh, reports that, uh, you know, 1,700 to 2,000 rupees per acre may be given as a direct income transfer uh, to farmers by the Modi government. Again, these are various uh, theories uh, that uh, various publications have spoken to as per their sources. Um, Avik Saha, what to you uh, will be a formulation or a composite scheme that works? The Ravi marketing season is still on. This government has announced that it will ensure that the farmers receive MSP. If that's the one thing that this government seriously tries to do, I'm not saying they have to succeed. They just have to try to do this it will be politically sensible for them. Farmers now understand that loan waivers, and as uh, Mr. Hussain pointed out, loan waivers do not solve any problem. It's, remember, it's this Congress government which gave this national loan waiver in 2008-9. So loan waivers without price do not make sense. I'm sorry to be repeating still this point. still asking for it, but, but Mr. This, Saha, I, I just must come here. But you're still asking for it. You agree and admit that farm loan waivers by themselves don't make sense. Uh, the implementation has been patchy at best, but the demand still stands. Please hear me uh, completely, stereophonically. We have two demands. The first demand is give us correct prices. And the second accompanying demand is once you give those prices, please take us out of this debt trap. You are dealing with the second ancillary problem first. That's not going to solve anything. That's why I said, if I were Mr. Modi's advisor, I would tell him that there is some marketing season still left. Many of the major crops will come in now. This is the time to actually make sure that the MSP muscle that the government has is flexed. That will send a far better message than mere loan waivers. 
And let me tell you, loan waivers leave in their wake more dissatisfied farmers than satisfied farmers. Uttar Pradesh is one example which you can politically analyze. Yeah. So loan waivers are easy, are the cheaper solution to political aspirations. But believe me, they do not convert. And BJP has not really done all that badly in agrarian, rural uh, Madhya Pradesh, if you look, analyze the election results. So it's not that the BJP is going, going to go out of power uh, or will stay in power if they offer loan waivers. BJP, the farmers feel, is not serious about the farmers. That's a far more core issue. Yeah, and they have to take certain steps indicate seriousness. That's a very important point, uh, to make farmers feel that you're serious about these issues. And that brings you back, Mr. Hussain, to the point that this is also right now a challenge of perception, or uh, perception management for the Modi government. Uh, on farm loan waivers specifically, consider, considering that the stated position of the central government has been that no, we will not extend farm loan waivers, states can do what they want to. Can the Modi government actually afford to backtrack on that at this point? And what can they do to, um, you know, give farmers the feeling that they are serious? Actually, what the Modi government will do uh, before the elections, I cannot say. Uh, but I will definitely say that uh, it was during an election campaign meeting in Bareilly, in UP, that the Prime Minister himself promised loan waiver in Uttar Pradesh if the BJP comes back to power. And the promise was honored, and it was announced that some 36,000 crores of loans in Uttar Pradesh will be waived. So it is not that BJP has been against the loan waivers. Right now, it is just that somebody else has taken that plan. So uh, unless they come up with a better idea, I hope they will come up with a better idea, loan waiver will continue to appeal to some people. But as Mr. Saha is saying, the root of the current crisis in Indian agriculture is the collapse of prices. Now, uh, what is still not fully understood by us is how can, what role can the government play in that? You know, the activists want that government should fix a minimum price below which no trading can take place in Mondays. And now, people who know the markets well, they feel that uh, even if such a decision is taken, it cannot be implemented. So what can be a mechanism for ensuring a fair price to farmers in the open markets is the issue before the government. Exports is one option, but for that the exports have to be competitive. And there comes the important role of infrastructure, rural infrastructure. You know, in this discussion about loan waivers, insurance, subsidies, interest, uh, you know, being paid by the government, etc. People forget that it is primarily the infrastructure which facilitates export and transport, export of commodities and transportation within the country, which gets farmers a better price. So these things also need to be debated. I'm sure the government will so, come up. So, so one one of options. one of the options being looked at. And I know Avik Saha wants to come in, but let me come in with this point, Avik, that one of the options being looked at is to um, you know uh, give farmers the gap between the MSP that has been fixed and what they actually sell for, considering that market prices for a lot of crops have dropped below the MSP. Uh, would that go to some extent to solve the problem? That will be a very important and serious step of seriousness uh, so far as uh, the Modi government is concerned. They've consistently said that they will ensure that if the market fails, they will step in. It's in the budget document. It's in writing. They really need to do it now. They really need to do it now. We do not agree that the government should purchase everything. It's impossible. It's ridiculous. And it, it is not the way the uh, food market should operate. But yes, a serious intervention, a price subvention, a price support scheme that is there on paper needs to now start walking on the ground if Mr. Modi wants to express seriousness. What I wanted to join issues with, with Mr. Hussein there is that, uh, you know, export. Yes, you are a country that is uh, overproducing food. Great. You should export it. What should the government do? The government does have a very important role in facilitating export. Now, a month ago, the uh, historic first time export policy was announced. But guess what it covers? It covers uh, processed packaged food and organic. Now, what fraction of fraction of 
the production in this country is covered by this. So export is also not looked at seriously. Look, the government needs to understand that the agrarian crisis deals with, uh, with affects a very large uh, set of electorate, and they need to act proactively on this, which could include exports, as Mr. Hussein suggested. And exports are possible. Exports have happened. It's, exports are historical. Yeah. In fact, it's the government, this government yeah. itself, which has stopped exports when prices rose for potatoes in Uttar Pradesh. So. Well, it's the government's time to but, step you know, in it and is, it, it is it is a tough yeah, call because it, it, remember that this uh, government's um, part of this government's mandate was also to control food inflation prices and retail food prices uh, which it has worked towards shankar i'm going to give you uh, the last word uh, with a, a slightly different question we've been talking about everything that the modi government needs to do and of course they're the incumbent uh, if they want to hold on to power they will need to act fast what about the opposition rahul gandhi will it be enough to just say that look, the Modi government didn't do enough, or will they also have to come up with a concrete plan of what they are willing to offer farmers? Well, obviously, they are on, the Congress has been very articulate and intelligent in what they stand against, but they have been less than articulate uh, and imaginative in what must be done. So they are now in power in four states, which uh, are large producers of agri-produce uh, in this country. And let's see whether they have a better idea or not. The issue that one must confront is that none of the political parties see agriculture as a pure private, cap, private sector enterprise. Most political parties see agriculture as a charity case. And unless that changes, I don't think this. So election, every election, you see a loan waiver and promise and everything. And that is... I'm not being cynical, but that is the worst kind of attention that uh, a country where 50% of the workforce is involved in agriculture needs. They need a plan, and they should just, I said this before also, that they need to have a two-day parliament session and draft laws. And the last point is that state governments get away easily on the uh, crisis in agriculture Whereas it is the state governments which are responsible for the infrastructure, for the markets, for the water supply, for the issues of procurement, for the implementation of MSP. Yeah. All of the state governments are absolutely have failed in coming up with any imaginary. Karnataka and Maharashtra have collective farming. Why isn't it uh, sort of uh, taken off? Punjab has some amount of you know, uh, connectivity with procurers. That hasn't taken off. So, you know, a loan waiver or an income support is necessary because the patient has fever. You have to give it, give the patient some relief. And so there comes in paracetamol politics. But you have to then take it forward and address the long-term policy issues. They need to find a champion like C. Subramanian to recast agriculture. Yeah, absolutely. I, I always love uh, the terms that uh, Shankar leaves us with. Paracetamol politics uh, is the new one. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Shankar Ayer, Avik Saha and Siraj Hussain uh, for joining us today. Paracetamol politics may work in the short term. It's the short term where uh, the Modi government needs to send out a message that they care for farmers. Will their plan be enough? Well, that's something to look forward to in the new year.